building a legacy. Out of the ashes of copper smelting, a new day has dawned. The land of the Copper Basin holds a legacy of hard-earned lessons. Now is the time to use those lessons to build a new legacy. One of preservation of who we are, what we treasure, and how the Copper Basin is a unique place. We began with a blueprint, conception of the Copper Basin Learning Center and teach programs and projects. I mean, the people who, the adults who run the, the Learning Center, the TEACH team, you know, they're called the TEACH team. We have a tech club or a technology team, heritage, you know, culture. When you get out into the real world, you're going to have to work with people, with a team, all your life. This began with a foundation of partnerships. Glen Springs Holdings Incorporated. A wholly owned subsidiary of Occidental Petroleum. Tompkins Digital Studios. The Red Hills Club. LJ Telephone Company. the Dunn Foundation. The framework was built of student works. I think essentially one of the big things we can gain is not the fact that you learn something out of a textbook, but you learn how to use what you've learned. Yeah. And that is essentially, that yes. is really what makes you successful. If you can change what you've learned into something that will fit here or will fit there and will function in several places, that's what makes, that's what you learn. You don't learn it until you can change it and use it for yourself. Here we have so much talent, and it's not exactly what you would call athletic, and it's not exactly what you would call academic. It's, it's a new breed that this school ha hasn't accommodated yet.
That's the difference between school and the learning center and doing what you have to do and doing what you want to do. The learning center is something that we want to do because it's made fun and we get to express ourselves in different clubs and take part in everything. The all-important interior is character, self-esteem, and experience. It's like the kids that never thought they could do anything, they've learned through the learning center that they can do it. Like I've learned, I can, most of the time I'm really nervous to talk. But, you know, once I get in front of people and I, it really, really, is beneficial to me and somebody else, then I can talk about it. I can learn through that and talk about it and you become you know, comfortable make something with the out of myself. You're talking that. about. Yeah. Yes. One of the things I have really learned from this experience at the Learning Center is that you just get up and do it. I mean, you just do it. And if it doesn't work out, then you do better next time. And if it doesn't work out then, you just do it better the next time. And you learn, you pick up something from every time you do this. You pick up something new, some way you can make it better. And that's an opportunity that this club, that these clubs have really given our students, is just the fact to know that you just do it. I only started art a year ago. And I'm like, I will not be a teacher. I hate teaching. I don't like all teachers. They're all stubborn and pig-headed. I don't ever want to put myself in a position where I have students go that way towards me. And now I'm going to be an art teacher. And the only way I guess I put myself in that position was through Miss Angie and through After School Art Club, and if we had a facility to do this, imagine what other students that was in my position could feel like. Imagine how many bright students we could have shine, and it'd be really amazing. I can say in ninth grade, I would have never thought I'd be actually as open as I am. If it hadn't been for multimedia, if it hadn't been for getting this job at ETC through the school, starting as an internship and becoming a paid internship, half of the stuff that I've learned this year, I would have never learned. CB TV, weekly Cougar News, your source for news, stories, and events in and around Copper Basin High School. Fair and slightly unbalanced. The Learning Center gives students the opportunity to try new things and figure out what they can do. So we should do the that. community doesn't have that chance. Right. Yeah. So we could get something together to give the community a chance to learn new things. I mean, anybody should get a chance to learn something new. Personally, I didn't know I could be artistic at all until this year when Miss I went to a after school art thing and I made this thing called an artist trading card and I winded up winning a hundred dollars for it. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so, you know, people need exposure. You figure out what they can do. I mean, I figured out what I want to do and what I have a passion for this year and it's not many people get that chance to do that. <laughs> but you know, as busy as you feel and as much as one has to do, I know with me, when when I lie awake in bed at night, I sit there and I think of all the things I've accomplished and how good that makes me feel at the end of the day. Because I see people who, who go through the school under the radar and they don't get involved and they aren't active in anything. And they have all this free time, and sometimes I sit there and I think, wow, I would love to have that free time. No, wait. No, wait. No, sir, no, I would not, because that means that I would be bored, and I hate being bored, and I just, I love being involved.
The exterior is expressed through the arts, communication skills, tools, and media. We have a performing arts center or a legacy center. It will also let the community show us how involved they are or they want to be. Because the community would be able to come in and rent out the center, use the center. You know, there's some a lot of organizations in this area that bands, musicians, maybe even some people who do you know, plays, other drama related things that would love to come perform in that performing arts center. You know, that would be a great benefit to the school. I'm Kendall Sandridge. And I'm Megan Watson. And we are at the Fannin County Performing Arts Center interviewing Fannin County High School seniors about their experiences with the PAC these past few years. First of all, what kind of performing arts do each of you participate in? Well, I mean, Courtney and I are in chorus and drama. Chorus. Just chorus. Chorus and drama. 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 Chorus. Some drama. Mostly chorus. Cool. What are the benefits of having a performing arts center? No hassle. Moving. Yeah. You don't have to set up anything. anything. Everything's already set up and ready for you. We can have like all of our assemblies and stuff here. So yeah. we can even do practices. It's really helpful actually to have one. We can even do practices while having to set up stuff. So that's better. And it's over. And it doesn't even actually just affect us. It affects <clears throat> our whole community because. Our community can rent it out at any time and use it. So we have lots of events going on. We have church plays that happen here. We have uh, elementary school. The Sweet Adelines are having a concert here this Saturday. Yeah, the Bluegrass Festival. Yeah, yeah Bluegrass, Bluegrass Festival is yeah. Saturday night. So lots of programs. Something that I personally have benefited from is we can have like recordings and stuff for auditions, or if we happen to go anywhere else, we can we have the equipment. We, we built it to record things and use. Things like that. Um, what specific features of the Performing Arts Center enhances your productions? Microphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the scream. Oh my gosh. I think the, our sound system enables to, enables us to do more performances. That way the community has more of an opportunity to see us because, I mean, just from personal experiences, when you have to yell a lot, you don't have a voice the next day. So if we didn't have microphones, we would literally be yelling our entire lines and Half the theater wouldn't hear us anyway because it's so huge, and it just we wouldn't be able to do as many performances as we do. They'd hear her. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm really loud, but I still wouldn't have a voice the next day. Do even, a, a oh, I was gonna say, even though we have a sound system, I mean, there's always the chance that it could be better. Yeah. And I think having our lighting and stuff like up in the catwalk that we don't have to change every show unless we just want to. Special I, effects. Yeah, it helps with our special effects a lot. All right, well, tell us a little bit more about like the backstage. How much that is easier for props and stuff. Like, how do you guys work with props? <laughs> we have a huge backstage. Yeah. It's just like, and we can have it like in the middle of the stage, and people would never see it because it's so far back. Like yeah. our prop table and stuff, and having our gaffing and stuff, being able to fly stuff in. I mean, it. I mean, it helps a lot with our props and everything. So. With like the light and they had that big set piece that just kind of came down. Yeah, we have yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can put walls and hang them yeah. and then drop them down. And then we have like uh, canvases with paintings on them. Mm -hmm. And you just, uh, it's, it's so cool. It yeah. really is. Yeah. And actually, if you want to go up later, I can show you some of those features. Awesome. Oh, and the plant. From yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yes. Like right now, there's a big plant back mm -hmm. there. Well, if you saw Joseph, there was like a 200 foot loft. Yeah, it's, yeah. Side down there and it actually And we had this huge mask. It was kind of our Pharaoh yeah. mask. Yeah. When Pharaoh yeah. came out, we had this huge mask that just dropped out of the ceiling. Really cool. This multimedia club, it began very humbly, it has such potential. The potential comes from the desire to do it. I've been to a school where, where everything was provided except for the desire. Without desire, there's nothing. You might as well not even have a program. Of course, you're gonna have to have funds, but if you have the desire, you're gonna overcome the difficulties, no matter what. I grew up mainly in Oklahoma and Texas, but I've also been to other places. Till it's a great place. Everybody's open-minded. They're not critical of people. They're tolerant. The teachers here are the best ones I've seen. They don't really care about the money, it's the students. 
it's all about the students and how to make them succeed. I actually got to do something I would never have gotten to do at Denison. It was when I did my sculpture, and that led me to discover who I truly am. Through art, you can discover who you are. And art is just not painting a, a picture on an easel. It's also with words, with textures, with sculptures, with any medium. Art is an expression of the soul. I got to discover who I am and how I can help drama. I can't really be a good actor right now as my speech impediment. But I can help backstage. I can help the actors. This was the best play I've ever seen. The, the set, low tech, but we managed to build this wonderful stage. Wonderful. And the actors did a great job. And everybody did their best. And that's what mattered. My official role, my starting role, was stage manager. Doc needed a stage manager and I volunteered. Then we needed lighting. It was a neat experience. And you can have more than one job in stage. It's highly difficult, but once you get the hang of it, it is possible. This will go far. ETC recognizes this. And I've never seen a company like ETC help a school like this. This area is the best area I've been to it. All the small businesses give what, what they can give to the school. I've never seen that before. That is truly unique to this area. The people are here are the greatest treasure. Open House of a Dream. The Copper Basin Legacy Center. When we want to do something learning center involved like the play or when band of course gets together and plays, how often do we have to run around the school looking for equipment looking for cables, looking for people, looking, looking for keys, looking for keys, <laughs> looking for a place to set up this stuff to do it. If we have a, a legacy center, a performing arts center, to put all this stuff in where we know where it is, where we can go get it when we want it, where we can keep the learning center or the people and the uh, supplies and stuff organized, then that would make it faster to get everything set up. There wouldn't be 15 minutes of setting something up before we're actually able to do something. You know, wasted time, there won't be such a thing at that point in time. A performing arts center would provide several of our artistic and our musical people the opportunity to express themselves as musicians. In this past year, I believe thoroughly that many of us have developed our skills in a very substantial way. We have become matured as musicians. And through this, we will have a grand opportunity to show those skills and to actually practice them. When I joined the Barker Brothers Bluegrass Band, I did not know anything about stage work. I didn't know anything about harmony. I did not know anything. And then they started working with me. And if every musician in this school could have the opportunity to learn such things, it would help them drastically. It's not just the fact that you can do it. Anybody can, any monkey can play a musician. Any monkey can throw it on a canvas, but it's how you express that art, how you display that art that gives us the opportunity to show what we know and where we can learn. Music just really kicked me up, you know. It's what picks me up in the morning, it's what puts me to sleep at night, and it's what drives me to go on through the day. And that's what I do every minute of every day. I'm thinking of a song, some kind of music that runs through my head and trying to figure out how you can put it out. space that we have, Miss Angie's office for instance, is always so crammed of people. We have to use the library and take possibly other people's academic time when we could have our own building and not, you know, take away from other people. We see how involved we are. Other people in the school see how involved we are. What we need to show who we need to show is the community how involved we are. And that is exactly what some sort of performing arts center would do for us. It would let us show the community. And it would let them see and support and show them what we're doing. And all the accomplishments that I'm so proud of and y'all are so proud of, it will let the community be proud of too.
And if the Learning Center, what it teaches us, gets us as excited about it as it does, imagine what it would do for the community. And imagine how much easier it would be for us to get a performing arts center if everybody around us wants it to. Yeah. Yeah. It's a community effort. It's not just a student group. It takes different people. It takes a lot of people. Maintenance, community support and participation. You're actually learning how to get out in front of people and in your community and even showing students younger than you how to do it and encouraging them to get into it and telling them how great it is. And if we had the building, that would be so much easier for more people to get involved. It is the syrup to this school's pancake. It doesn't pour over the whole pancake, but it comes in contact with so much of it. And everything that this school has, I mean, the academics in the classroom, the, the skills that are built in athletics, um, the other clubs, I mean, everything that, that students get, it ties in all of that. And just like the syrup in that pancake, it gives the school its flavor. It really brings out the best because it takes the best from everything and it brings it in that culminates in usually some project. You don't eat your pancakes plain, I mean, but it brings out the very best in this school. And it, and just as the syrup has flavor, it brings out the flavor that this community has through its history, through its culture. I mean, this is a, a an avenue, a way that we can positively channel the creativity that we have at this age. I mean, that's what the Longest Center is. It's an incubator for people's imaginations. I mean, this isn't just some, some fluff way to keep kids busy. I mean, it gives a real and meaningful chance for students to be able to accomplish something. And that will never leave them. Tennessee Arts Commission. Appalachian Community Bank. Copper Hill United Methodist Men. Copper Basin Credit Union. Heritage Propane. Knights of Columbus. Southeast Tennessee Development District. Ticket purchases fundraising support, and hands-on help. One thing I've, I've learned is that when you're talking to someone, everyone has one thing 
that when that subject comes up, it's like there's a different light in their eyes. Something about the tone of their voice changes and they get really passionate about that subject. I know my subject is music. Um, Wesley's subject is music. Megan's subject is writing. Um, when you talk about that subject, they're, it's like they're a complete, they're so enthusiastic about it. And I, I, look, I walk down the hallways and I see so many people who they don't have their subject yet. And that's truly a shame because just that enthusiasm, it's the greatest thing in the world. And these people who don't have that subject, well, what if it is music? What if it is art? Um, what if it's painting? What if it's writing? What if it's multimedia? And they don't know it yet. They need that opportunity to find out because it's the most life-changing thing ever. Equity. Sustainable future for the Copper Basin. A lot of people that I've noticed talking about their various arts, these these clubs with be it computer club or the music club or the art club, they see it as an extracurricular activity alone. They see it as a hobby, something that you're going to do in your spare time. They don't really realize that no matter what club you're in, it all has real life applications that you can take with you beyond uh, high school. And that's what I'm figuring out now. The learning club has taught me time management, whether I have managed my time very well or not. It has. <laughs> Um, it's taught me to be involved in everything that I love because you have to have a passion in life or else there's no fun in it. It's, I mean, it's just taught me so many things that I'm carrying beyond high school, beyond things to do with my spare time. And I can apply it to my job, to my regular school work. And people don't realize this when they need to. When you sink your heart so much into something, that something is never going to leave your heart. And as long as time and space does not inhibit me from being involved, I'm going to be involved. Because I know what it did for me. I know what it's doing for the students that was there when I'm there, the students now. And um, things are happening. And I want to be a part of that. And that's, uh, that's just my lifelong goal is to be whatever I'm involved with, be able to have a positive impact. And I know that this organization has a positive impact upon the students and it does on the community. And like I, I want to be involved in that. Through my a mentor, Jeremy McMillan, um, a wonderful individual who was also in the Learning Center, was the, one of the charter members of the Learning Center, gave me enough courage, I guess, and initiative to go out on my own to start my own business. So far I've had quite a bit of success. I've had people, all kinds of people asking for me to design them websites. I've already had two paid jobs that have made a pretty penny, I would say. And I have multiple jobs coming down the pipeline toward me. That was all influenced and started by the Learning Center. It set a fire inside me to do such a thing. I've never thought of music as anything but a hobby. I mean, it's just something I enjoy doing, something that, you know, I learned about six years ago, and I've never really thought it would amount to much of anything. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm walking down hallways, and I'm hearing people who have got my, my song stuck in their heads for some reason, or I'll have someone who doesn't even go to this school text me and be like, hey, Kendall, I just heard your song. It's awesome. Surprise. One glance at you was all it took, and nothing mesmerized. And maybe it's the mountains or the moonlight in your eyes. But there are many words I'd like to speak to you tonight. And you know, how, how do you describe how that, how that, just how that makes you feel? Because you know, I love playing guitar and I love singing, and just the opportunity to be able to come to school and work on that here it's it's unbelievable and part of like having a building to do this in is recording the CD you would hear the air conditioning unit cut on um, it would make the quality not bad but not as good as it could be or you know someone would open a door or flush a toilet and you could hear it you know something that happened at the other end of the building I mean if we had a building specifically for stuff like that the quality of all of our work would be so much better. Teach me how to drive a stick shift. We always made plans, but never really got around to it. So I had this to the list of things I'll never know. 
Like where you had to go Yeah, I just want you to know That when you went away All the world went with you And the only one who stayed Is this girl who missed you so much And yeah, this song is just to tell This project is funded in part by Arts Build Communities. A program funded by the Tennessee General Assembly and administered in cooperation with the Tennessee Arts Commission and the Southeast Tennessee Development District.